So on the bench then what we've got is the uh, flagship router from uh, Virgin Media and uh, I think this has actually been out about 18 months now I think I got mine well actually I think I got mine probably two years ago but um, this is actually a uh, brilliant router and uh, I have said many times that uh, I wouldn't modify one of these because out of the box it uh, really is probably the best router from the uh, internet service providers here in the UK so as I say, it hands down beats uh, everybody else's router, even the uh, BT Hub 5. I think it's uh, far superior than that one. And uh, when this was released, it was uh, the uh, BT Hub 4 that was released as uh, competition for this. And uh, as you probably know, the Hub 4 is... Uh, it's just a mess of a router and the uh, hub 5 is uh, a lot better than the hub 4 and uh, you know it's a cracking little router but uh, i think this one uh, beats it hands down every day of the week so as i said i said i would never bother actually modifying one of these and uh, i uh, recently uh, a good friend of mine asked me to actually modify his and uh, he uh, runs a uh, media company from his home and he didn't want to use a repeater to get the uh, signal into his uh, workshop at the bottom of his garden because um, he's got a uh, hundred megabyte plus um, internet connection from uh, Virgin I think he's getting about 120 megabytes and uh, he also has the uh, business one so he actually gets something like uh, 40 50 megabytes uh, upload speed as well and uh, he asked me if I would uh, modify the antennas on his uh, router to see if he gets uh, a better signal in his workshop and uh, you know at, at the minute he had a uh, quite a long length of ethernet cable to have it wired in directly and uh, I was actually amazed at how well the uh, signal actually performed with uh, a couple of uh, dipole antennas for the uh, 2.4 and three dipole antennas for the uh, 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. So I thought what I'd do is uh, show you how I uh, did it with uh, this one that I have actually picked up off eBay. Now, a word of warning, um, you cannot get a uh, super hub off eBay and then plug it directly into your uh, Virgin Media network. It, Virgin Media does not work like that. It has to be uh, authorized at the center. So it takes the MAC address of the uh, box here and then authorizes it on their networks for it to actually work. You just can't plug one in. Now, these actually do go for quite a bit of money on eBay, but um, trust me, if you do buy one, there's no way you'll ever get it to work. Virgin Media will not switch this modem on for you. But of course you could plug a uh, separate modem into this and then just use the uh, Wi-Fi of this uh, router. No problem at all. So if you've got a Superhub 1 and uh, you are just put it into uh, modem mode and then plug uh, an ethernet cable into this and then you can use the wireless section of this router to talk to the uh, Superhub 1. That actually works quite well and I know a few people who do actually do that. And the uh, second thing to consider when you're modifying your Virgin Media Super Hub, um, Sky and the others, after the 12-month uh, contract is up, the uh, equipment is actually yours. Now, Sky, um, if your, uh, say, your uh, Plus Box breaks down after the 12-month uh, period, they will uh, offer to sell you a new one. They will not go out and replace it under guarantee because the guarantee is gone. Now, you can go and buy equipment off eBay and plug it in to uh, your Sky Network and you can get it to work. You can ring them up and ask them to uh, sort it out for you as well because it's their equipment. So they have a completely different policy. Virgin Media is a, a total lockdown. Even though you might have paid £40 for your uh, Super Hub, it still technically belongs to Virgin Media. Now, I've been with Virgin Media since they took took over Blue Yonder. I was with Blue Yonder Cable since uh, about uh, 2000, 2001. And I have never, ever sent a piece of equipment back to Virgin Media. They never asked me to, and uh, I never have sent a piece of equipment back. 
but one thing they do do if you break con contract with them early so uh, you you break the contract not them they will ask for their equipment back and if you don't send it back they will charge i think it's something like 250 pounds for the hub and the uh, tv setup there and uh, they will bill you separately so they will double whammy you they will uh, come after you for the uh, debt of the contract and they'll come after you for the debt of the equipment that's the only time i've ever known virgin media to actually demand their uh, actual equipment back and i can tell you that uh, when you do send it back if you uh, get one of their magical little boxes that they uh, say to send out and uh, put your equipment in and post it back to them they are not recycled in any way shape or form i know a uh, couple of people who work at virgin media they're not uh, technicians they actually work with the uh, website section and keeping all that up to date and uh, i can tell you now that these end up in landfill in somewhere in india they are not recycled in any way shape or form which to, to be perfectly honest is uh, not good i mean I, I would prefer to see virgin media offer a reconditioned unit at say half the price so if uh, i wanted to upgrade to the super hub and they were trying to charge me 40 quid then if they said you know you can have a, a reconditioned one for 20 pound you know that that would be a good thing but no they don't i don't care what you read on the forums or anything like that they go into a landfill in india so before we actually modify the uh, hub 2 i thought it'd be a good idea to get a uh, baseline on the uh, signal strength and i've got it uh, fairly far away it's going through four brick walls and it's about uh, 80 meters away and uh, i'm in here i'm in my workshop and i'm just using my laptop with its uh, built-in wi-fi card and we'll have a look at the graph for the uh, 2.4 gigahertz and you can see there it's uh, a pretty weak signal and uh, we've got the uh, 5 gigahertz here which uh, is slightly better than the uh, 2.4 gigahertz so that gives us a nice baseline to see uh, what kind of improvement we get after we've actually modified these antennas so to get into this then it's just clips all around the side so a little pry tool and pry it away from the uh, main chassis and uh, there is also a little sneaky phillips head screw just under the uh, label here and when you're actually removing the uh, side panel off this router the uh, actual antennas are fixed to uh, the panel we're trying to remove so just be uh, a little bit wary of that you don't want to go ripping the uh, coax uh, too hard out of there and ripping it away from the board itself so here is the board itself out of the case now this modification is really really simple you can go ahead and buy some little sma connectors like this one that have a high rose connection on the end there and these can just plug straight into the little high rose connectors that are already on the board and you can drill a hole in the side of your case and mount your uh, SMA bulkhead there so then you can attach any kind of antenna you actually want so it doesn't get more simple than this to actually upgrade the uh, antennas in this so as I said you can just buy these little pigtails you can buy them off eBay and if you don't mind waiting a few weeks buy them from China for uh, probably about a pound each and uh, you can get them in uh, longer versions as well they don't have to be this short but um, I'm actually going to make my own here so I'm going to use the coax from the uh, built-in antennas here from the Super Hub 2 and I'm going to crimp on my own little uh, SMA bulkhead connectors onto there. So I thought we'd take a uh, quick look at the little PCB antennas that uh, are in this router because a lot of the uh, new innovation um, that's happening with antennas and antenna theory these days tends to be in these uh, small form factor PCB antennas like uh, these in here and uh, it's quite an unusual shape this one's the 2.4 gigahertz one and they do have patent uh, pending on the uh, back of them and this one is the uh, 5 gigahertz one so you get some very intricate and unusual shapes with these uh, little PCB antennas but uh, it is uh, that shape that actually uh, produces a radiation pattern that uh, has more gain 
than what you would normally get for uh, its size so that is definitely where the innovation is these days for antenna design so as for actually modifying the super hub too if you get the uh, pigtails already made up you don't even need a soldering iron it's a, a pretty straightforward upgrade but uh, one thing you are going to have to do is mount the antennas now on the one that I've uh, already modified I arrange them in a fan shape across the top here so I have got my three 5 gigahertz antennas here and the two 2.4 gigahertz antennas at the back here now you uh, do want to make sure that you purchase proper 5 gigahertz antennas for this and uh, not use 2.4 gigahertz on the uh, 5 gigahertz uh, frequency because you will cripple your router you want to make sure that you get a uh, 5 gigahertz antenna for this and uh, again the appropriate 2.4 gigahertz now i have shown in many videos how you can actually make these but again these are from uh, china and they don't cost a lot of money at all so to fit the uh, actual SMA connectors to the uh, case itself you don't need to drill a hole I've uh, attached mine as you can see here to the uh, vents at the top here so what I've done is I've just removed the middle piece of plastic from this vent here to open up this gap and the same on this uh, side as well and uh, the little SMA connectors just go up through that gap you've got a little washer on the uh, underside and uh, it's just held in place with the nut on the uh, top here but because that nut is a little bit small you're better off using something like these uh, little nylon washers here as well so if you put that over the top of there and then you nut down on there it uh, just grips onto those two bars a little bit stronger and uh, it also looks a little bit neater as well for the ones on the corners what I've done I've taken the center uh, piece of plastic out there and I've just trimmed away two of the uh, smaller ones either side I've actually just trimmed them back to here so now we can just put the SMA connector through and then screw that down onto there so as far as uh, any uh, specialist tools uh, you need to actually uh, modify this router you don't really need any you don't even have to uh, drill any holes so second test then, I've got the uh, router at the same distance away, exactly where it was before the uh, antenna modification and as you can see now the major difference in the signal strength, both uh, signals, the 5 GHz and the 2.4 GHz, almost into the 90s, so I'm very happy with that. So as you just saw in that test you get a lot more range over distance than uh, you did previously just by modifying the five antennas there and you know it's probably one of the easiest routers I've opened up in quite some time where you can actually modify the antennas themselves with no specialized tools at all and I'll leave links in the description below where you can actually buy those pigtails from and uh, the antennas as well it really is such a an easy modification and it gives uh, massive results over range and you can also get these uh, little washers here you can also get them in black as well so it really finish it off quite nicely and uh, you know I don't think it looks too bad at all with its uh, five antennas on top there so any questions uh, drop them below and I'll do my best to answer them but uh, just please 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 remember you can't go buying one of these off eBay and expect Virgin Media to uh, connect it for you they just won't do that so don't be conned into buying one on eBay and to be quite honest I'm, I'm surprised how much these actually go for on eBay they can actually go for more money than what they uh, actually cost to buy off Virgin Media so just uh, don't go down that route I would only buy one of these if it's going cheap and uh, if you buy one stick it in uh, a cupboard somewhere and modify your Virgin Media one and then if you come to the end of your contract or you swap this if they uh, bring out a Super Hub 3 then what you can do is give them the one that you purchased off eBay because they do not check the serial numbers when you actually do hand it back so you can actually do that if you want peace of mind that they're not going to charge you for actually uh, modifying their equipment but at the end of the day if they do charge you they're only charging you £40 anyway so like I said I hope you did enjoy that video and if you did please give it a thumbs up and hopefully you'll join me on the next one